Coming up on the Pavement Talk today, we'll be talking about the latest takeover news. We've got a little bit of an update, sort of, on that front. Also, transfer rumours and the morning after the night before, all the quotes and the fallout from that awful result at St James's. Check it out. Jay here from Stratford Paddock. This is the Paper Talk. As you can see, I'm outside Old Trafford as per usual and it's, it's all right. It's mild, but my mood isn't mild after yesterday's defeat away at Newcastle. Continuing a pretty, well, awful run of form against the top nine teams away from home for Manchester United this season. We'll get into all that later on. We've got uh, other stories as well. Quotes from the post-match reaction after the game yesterday and also some transfer stories, not to mention the update on the takeover. So make sure you are hitting like, share and subscribe. Right, let's get into some of the quotes from yesterday. Um, Eric Ten Hag was sort of explaining his decision to, to make the substitutions that he made, some of which confused uh, quite a few fans and a few people who watch him were like, I don't really understand that. So when he took off, he basically took off both centre halves, didn't he? We went to a bit of a change of system. You had Victor Lindelof coming on, you had Fred coming on, you had Palestri coming on. He said, so after we are losing the game and you try to save the game, to go one against one in the back, bring off your two centre halves, bring a fresh one in, you can defend with space on his back and bring an extra player in defence in Palestri. I think we create good chances. Anthony Marshall had our best chance, a deflective shot, but it's always difficult when you run out of time, then you have to risk certain things from the back, you bring extra offence players in, you hope to turn the game, you have to try it. So he's explaining why, because I was a little bit baffled when he did that, I'm not going to lie to you, but you know, you trust Tanai, he knows what he's doing. So that was his thinking, didn't work obviously, but he's explained why he went for it in that way. Also after the game, Luke Shaw was talking to Sky Sports as well. He said, not good enough, I feel like every time I speak after games, bad results, I'm always honest. Us as a team, we have to be honest. I do feel Newcastle are a very good team, uh, sorry, a very good side, but I don't think they won the game on quality today. They won it on passion and hunger, desire, attitude, and they clearly had that higher motivation than we had. That can't be possible. I feel like we say the same things every time we lose. Like I say, it's not acceptable and we know that. It was a massive game today and they wanted it more. And Man United, that cannot be possible. And I agree with him. I agree with him that they did want it more. You can talk about the quality and the ability and all that other stuff. But sometimes, and I hate to use that term, but it does come down to a bit more hunger and desire. And just getting stuck in and winning those second balls, winning those 50-50s. And United were second best all over the pitch. And fair enough to Luke Shaw, he's come out and he spoke to the press and he's fronted it up. But he was as bad as anyone when it came to not, not performing yesterday. So I think it's admirable that he will speak, speak up. But when he talks about motivation and desire... I think like his teammates, they all have to have a look in the mirror. It's no good making these statements and doing these Instagram posts or whatever, saying, you know, we're sorry, we know what it means to the fans, we go again and all that usual dross we see after a defeat. We need to see a bit more from Manchester United players in games like this. Because as I mentioned earlier, our away run, our away form, sorry, against the top nine, nine teams this season has been absolutely woeful. I'll go through it. You probably don't need reminding, but I'll do it anyway. Forgive me. So Brentford 4-0, City 3-6 or 6-3, Villa 3-1, Arsenal 3-2, Liverpool, you know that one, I won't repeat it, and now Newcastle 2-0. We're not just losing these games, we're losing them pretty comfortably, and in some of them we're getting absolutely battered. So it is uh, really worrying that trade at Manchester United have developed recently, and you look at our home form, you can't fault it. Oh, uh, Eric Sennag said he wanted to turn Old Trafford into a fortress, I think we've done that. But when you look at our away form, it is pretty poor and the players have to look at themselves. And also, you have to look at the manager. I love Eric tonight. He's a great manager. But he has to work out a way to solve this problem because it is a problem. And you see, I'm not saying this is going to happen to him, but you see how now, I think he's the ninth longest serving manager in the Premier League with the sackings of uh, Brendan Rodgers or mutual consent, whatever you want to call it. And also Graham Potter as well. So it goes to show how, you know, managers are getting looked at. And with new owners on the horizon, they're going to be looking at the manager, looking at results and going... You know, what's going on here now? I'm not standing here saying Eric Tenag's under pressure or that it's his, his fault, everything's, you know, not working out the way it should be away from home. My point is, all managers are under pressure. When you manage a Manchester United and there's certain things that aren't going right, you're going to get looked at, especially when the owner's coming in. So, like I said earlier, that's something he needs to look at. Uh, we'll talk about a couple of transfers and I'll get into the ownership latest. Uh, Inter are interested in Donny van der Beek. This is one doing the rounds. This is from Fihajis. Inter Milan uh, interested in signing United midfielder Donny van der Beek this forthcoming summer. Not worked out for it as for van der Beek, has it? 
I feel for him because you thought that when Eric Tanag came in, a manager that obviously knows him, then that was going to be an opportunity for him to show what he's about and get some more chances and hopefully get himself, from his point of view, into the first team picture. But it hasn't happened. He got an injury just at a time when, had he not got that injury, I think he could have got a few games because... There was an opportunity then for him to step up, but he picked up that knock, hasn't played since, and I'll be surprised if, I'll, I'll be brutally honest with you, I'll be surprised if he's here next season. He might be, because the manager might still like him, but it's not worked out for Donny van der Beek. I don't, you know, don't care how you look at it. Um, also, there's another one doing the rounds, and this is about um, the, the kid from Benfica, Gonzalo Ramos. Um, it says here, Eric Tanak, this is in the Express, Green lights a £100 million deal for Man United, but takeover could cause a big problem. So it's saying that Eric Tanag wants Gonzalo Ramos, but we'll have to see what happens with the takeover. And he says he's reportedly given uh, the go-ahead for Manchester United to chase a nine-figure move for Benfica striker Gonzalo Ramos, although any deal would depend on the outcome of the ongoing takeover process at Old Trafford. Um, the Red Devils are known to be in the market for a first-choice striker. We know that. £100 million for Ramos seems quite steep, but maybe that's the sort of going right now for any sort of you know striker who can score goals we know that Ramos can score them we'll have to keep you posted on that keep you updated and let us, we'll let you know what happens like it says in the article though any move whether it's going to be for Ramos whether it's going to be for Ossiman Harry Kane we've been linked with depends on who the owners are and what's going to happen there now this is a, a story doing the rounds this is about Thomas um, Ziliakus this is the guy who, um, who's been linked with a move for Manchester United now his sort of move for Manchester United is a bit of a funny one because it's not like uh, like uh, the, the the Jim Ratcliffe or the Sheikh Jassim bids where he's saying, right, okay, I'm going to bid for the club and buy it. He's talking about paying sort of half of the club and then the fans paying half and it all seems a bit, well, it doesn't seem a bit unlikely. It seems massively unlikely, if I'm being honest. And now the latest sort of twist in his tale is... Uh, Finnish entrepreneur Thomas Ziliakis has urged rival Manchester United bidders to Jim Ratcliffe and Sheikh Jassim uh, bin Hamad Al Tani to join forces with him to buy the Glazer family out of Old Trafford. And he says here, he says, I don't see any reason why I can't work with Sir Jim and Sheikh Jassim. It makes perfect sense. Well, it doesn't, does it? Like, let's have it. I could say that. I could say, tell you what, Sheikh Jassim, should we all join forces? Just Sheikh Jassim and Sir Jim Ratcliffe and Jay Martin, we'll all put my money in. You put in, you know, well, perhaps all of it. I'll put in a tenner and we'll own it together. That's not going to happen. And I don't, and I think even if Sir Jim Ratcliffe and Sheikh Jassim were to come together, they won't have him involved. They don't need his money. They don't need his influence. They don't need anything he's got, really. So I think that's a bit of a, a non start There's also one just final uh, article on the, the takeover I saw. This is doing the rounds as well. I think I saw it in the mirror and a few other papers that um, Sir, Sir Jim Ratcliffe met Eric Tanag when he, when he came here. Sir Jim Ratcliffe obviously visited Old Trafford to go over the, the, the takeover process. But apparently it was just a coincidental meeting at the training ground. It wasn't a planned meeting where he spoke to the manager in terms of his vision or anything like that. They just bumped into each other at Carrington, according to the reports. There's not much to get excited about on that front in terms of whether it's going to be Sir Jim Ratcliffe or Sheikh Jassim. Those two seem like the main bidders. But as always, we'll keep you updated. So make sure you are hitting like, share, subscribe. We've got the Paddock Podcast later on. We've got Uncensored later on this week. We've also got the Brentford game to look forward to where we can hopefully put the absolute travesty that was the Newcastle result behind us. And producer Ethan needs to stop smiling behind his camera. Otherwise, he'll be looking for a new job. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. I'm Jay Motty outside. I'm getting colder. Old Trafford, bizarrely. Thanks for watching.